Welcome to DeFi by Design, where we talk all things blockchain and cryptocurrency while striving to educate, empower, and enrich. It's your boy Andy, and welcome back to the DeFi Slate YouTube channel. Smash the like button on this video that really helps us out, and sit back and enjoy the content. Thank you very much. What's going on, guys? Welcome to episode 56 of the DeFi by Design podcast. Yo, 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 today is ENS airdrop day. We got it, and these boys did not. Uh, that sucks for Benjamin and the team. Uh, mm-hmm. nah, I'm just messing around. We met these lads over in Lisbon. Um, glad to be chatting now back and home. They're actually still out in Lisbon, which is super cool because the Solana event is going on. And um, yeah, things are hitting all time highs. Twitter is going abs- absurd. I'm pretty sure we got hashtag GM trending yesterday. Um, I'm not really sure what's happening at this point. Um, but yeah, we're here to talk about interest rates. No, I'm kidding. We don't like interest rates here at, <laughs> at Cheeto. Um, yeah, no, all things DeFi today, some lending stuff, some multi-chain stuff, uh, perhaps some new kind of, um, you know, important and relevant protocol stuff. Um, and yeah, we're going to talk about Cheeto, what's important there and what they're building. Looking forward to learning a bit about, um, you know, some important and cool new kind of primitives in DeFi that we haven't really seen yet. So pass it over to Rob and let's get it rolling, Rob. Rob. Yeah, man. It's, uh, it's about 1040 on November 9th. We're looking good. Like Andy said, everything's all time highs. We're rocking and rolling. Um, stoked to be here talking to the guys from Cheetah. Um, It was really cool meeting everyone at, at Lisbon. And uh, there, there has just been so many super cool conversations that started there. And now we've gotten a chance to continue like through podcasts, through, through Twitter and whatnot. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's super cool talking to you guys and, and uh, excited to hear what we got going on over at Chidao, uh, the multi-chain world and everything going on um, behind my finance. So I will pass it over to uh, Benjamin and crew and uh, let you guys introduce yourself. Yeah, man. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Uh, like they said, we met over at, at Lisbon. Some crazy conversations, man. I, I feel like it's so cool having everybody together, um, sharing awesome ideas. People are building new things. Uh, but yeah, so a little bit of background. I'm, I'm Benjamin, core team here at, at Chidao. Um, yeah. Yeah, howdy. Kila, also a core team over here at uh, Chidao. Um, I don't know, did we bump into each other at Li- in Lisbon? Oh yeah, at the gelato party. We were trash, dude. Oh, me too, man. <laughs> but the gelato was great. It was so cold, but I kept drinking, man. Kept having my ice cream. <laughs> Yeah, I probably had my shirt off at that event as I yeah. tend to do it. It was towards the later time. Yeah. So. Dude, what? It was like 50 degrees, man. It was freezing. <laughs> it, does, it doesn't matter. I take no, my shirt off. No, it's like, just like a progression of the night, yeah. no matter the weather. Yeah. Yeah, you know, definitely. Um, that's definitely, so, you know, if you have a button down, you got to make sure you take one button down for every airdrop that you get throughout the night. Exactly. And, and I'm they're glad, coming. I'm glad you call it a button down because some people call them a button up. And yeah, no, it's buttoned down, baby. Cause that's what you're doing. Yeah, that's, a little, that's a little too formal for, yeah. for our liking. So Speaking what kind of, of shirts do you guys have on there now? Wait, <laughs> I'm, I'm rocking the, the graph shirt. Um, I get stopped all the time. I see if I work for the graph, of course. I got the Gnosis on also just uh, LizCon swag. I you think. never have to shop, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. If you keep going to events, like you never really do have to shop. I, I was just in Abu Dhabi as well for the, for the Phantom uh, Phantom DC event, got tons of swag. I am like, I am set. I'm good. How was that event? Oh, it was fucking fantastic. It was it was crazy because it was very extravagant. But the thing was that there wasn't too many people there. There was about 200 people there, which was a really great size because you got to meet everybody. You got to really connect with them. Got to speak with them. It was over like a long, like a longer period of time as well. So it was like uh, four to five days around. And yeah, it was Pretty just, long. yeah, it was, it was fantastic. Hopping in there first day, CZ from Binance was there. So like it kind of already set the stage, like what the fuck, like what's going on? Um, Andre was there, right? Yeah, yeah. Andre was there. Um, uh, Pablo from our team got to speak there as well. Give a little speech about stable coins. No, I, I mean, a lot of people were there um, yeah. from the Phantom community. Lots of good alpha uh, yeah. as well. You guys just uh, just moved there, right? Some of your protocol or how'd that go? Uh, we're nomadic, man. So depends on the <laughs> second you ask us like where we are. It's just uh, 
I mean, I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'll rob it at the next driver for sure. If, uh, <laughs> if you want to guess where I'll be. <laughs> so was it, was it a like super, you know, like just very bullish and powerful event or was it kind of like a shill fest? Like, like what made you guys want to transfer Cheetah and, and kind of open up there as far as the protocol on Phantom? I mean, yeah. Phantom has a pretty sweet deal uh, for new projects. Like if you have 5 million in TVL, they'll give you $3 million. Um, it's well, not bad. Yeah, they give I you mean, a million, million, a million Phantom, Phantom, which is which like, yeah. Is, yeah, $3 million or, or more. I don't know what the price is right now, but yeah, it's, like it's, it's yeah. really For sweet. continued, just to build, basically. Just to continue. It's a blank check. It's a blank uh, check. You can do what you what you want with it, but it is one of the best like incentive programs that they've that there is in DeFi. Because also with a lot of different protocols, it's like yeah, you know, submit a proposal. The lobbying. Uh, you know, the lobbying. We, you never know how much you're actually gonna get. They ask you all these questions about like what are you gonna do with it. With Phantom, it was just like, hey, look, come and build. Um, if you build something cool and people like it, and you have TVL, then we'll give you we'll give you this money. Uh, it's it's again not all up front, like you have to, you have to have that TVL for like two months and then they start giving it to you. And it's like over vested, 12 months. Yeah. Vested over 12 months. But you can get up to like, you can get a lot of money. Let me just say, yeah. uh, and it's very good. I mean, I said DAO, I mean, all of that goes to our, our people, but um, very good deal. Yeah. And also it's very open. Like I, we deal with a lot of chains now that we're doing this multi-chain expansion and Phantom, like I went to our telegram, started talking to one other mods. And within like five minutes, I was in a chat with their CEO, CMO, CTO, like all the C whatever's and like everybody. <laughs> no, yeah, let's get on a call. Let's have a fire yeah. chat. Let's have you launch. Uh, let's help you out, guys. Yeah. Um, you don't get that with every chain. Yeah, that definitely did stand out. I mean, when we launched, we had retweets. We we had the CMO come on for a fireside chat. I'm sure they're behind a lot of the the phantom accounts <laughs> tweeting about us. <laughs> yeah. There is it's quite nice. Yeah, yeah, a lot of support, a lot of support. Yeah, and the we, FTM alerts guy, Austin. Um, if you were out there, I'm sure you met him. He's a he's yeah. a big chiller. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah we really like him. Yeah, Austin, Austin's great. He actually just made a made a video, kind of walking walking through Cheetah, and um, yeah, we really we hit it off over there in, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, he's also renting out a big like a big house in Miami when the when like the Bitcoin conference is happening in Miami. And so, yeah, we may, uh, there we go. We may be uh, visiting Miami in January. Yeah. We That's... need a place to stay away from the Bitcoiners when we, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they can get toxic. Definitely. <laughs> we were there for the last one and it was, it was something else. Yeah. Uh, I heard the side events were pretty hot. Yeah. 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 There was a boat and, uh, a slingshot one, it, was, right? it was a good time. It was fun. Uh, there's a couple coming up. There's one at the end of this month. There's one in January. Miami's just a pop in place when it when it comes to crypto. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tried yeah. to like go to a bunch because it's really good for BD, but also like I think we've been doing conferences for over a month and <laughs> I'm pretty tapped out. I don't know about you, Akila. No, I think keep going. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think also it's like the the Phantom one also gave me a lot of energy mm. in terms of uh, go keep going to uh, these conferences. And I mean, yeah, the the Bitcoin ones I, Bitcoin people have a lot of money and they're sitting on a lot of, you know, sitting on a lot of Bitcoin. And I think they can do a lot with what they're sitting on. A lot of them also, they, you know, they struck, struck it rich kind of early on and don't really know what to do with it. And so um, these, these new DeFi, you know, things that they're introduced to, you know, they, uh, a lot of them will, will jump in. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a big upgrade coming up for Bitcoin Taproot where they can enable smart contracts on Bitcoin. That's like four days away or something. Interesting. I haven't yeah. really been, been looking at that. No, I mean, I there's been no coverage about it. Absolutely none. Like, it hasn't been talked about at all, but it's like kind of huge and it's Bitcoin. It's like, we're so enthralled in like what's going on in DeFi that like nobody cares anymore. It's like, oh yeah, cool, cool upgrade. Yeah, man. yeah exactly. I know. Not, this is the first time I heard about it. I, I hope it's compatible with everything else. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's part of the multi-chain world, right? Like Bitcoin's yeah. a chain, you know, just like all, all these other chains. Yeah, and, no, uh, we want to go when off, you know? on Bitcoin. When, <laughs> dude, <laughs> I, uh, we, we go everywhere. Um, as long as they don't charge us an arm and a leg on fees, <laughs> we're, we're yeah. good. 
So if I'm a DeFi user on Phantom right now, you know, I got some FTM, you know, I got some, uh, some things in Reaper, some auto compounders, you know, maybe I'm doing something on, um, on Scream or wherever else. What can I do on Cheetah? You know, what's the value add for me? Where, what's the rewards? What's the idea behind it? You know, what can I do uh, with my assets on Phantom now um, if I would like to use Cheetah? Yeah, I mean, you know, you can always like go to a BFI. Um, and go to their scream strategies to get like money or yield from depositing it into lending platforms. You can go to Urine and you can deposit FTM to get some deposits for that. But that's I feel like that's really step one if you're a DeFi user. If you want to like take it a little bit ahead, um, you don't want to just keep those like positions, those interest bearing positions, kind of just sitting there. Um, you could lever them. You know, you could extract that value and hedge yourself. You could extract the value to buy another token. Maybe you're very excited about ENS, so you want to you know, get some stable coins, bridge them, and buy some ENS. Um, you can do all of that at Cheetah, right? Because we accept all these different kinds of interest-bearing tokens, like the receipts tokens, as collateral. And so then you can mint stable coins uh, at 0% interest. We don't charge you interest um, against the value of those tokens. Uh, what I see a lot of people doing is they take interest-bearing stable coins specifically interest-bearing DAI. So you get like Moose Cream DAI, you get uh, Urine Vault DAI, and then you lever that guy <laughs> a lot. And you could get pretty high returns on single-sided staking for stable coins. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think, yeah, sorry. I, the, big, the biggest thing that we're trying to do uh, at Cheetah is let you use the assets that you have that are just sitting idle and kind of put them to work to, you know, make you more yield. Mm -hmm. Even if they're already being put to work. Yeah. You can put them to work many times. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, so kind of like, kind of like, um, on Ethereum liquidity has 0% interest, um, you know, as, as far as borrowing goes, but there's a small set, um, fee to borrow. Is that similar? Like, is there a small fee with Cheetah? How, how does that work? Yeah. 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 It's a, it's a small repayment fee. So, uh, it's a 0.5% repayment fee. Uh, so that means only when you are repaying your debt, do you pay that, uh, that fee. So you can hold on to your debt for as long as you want. It's not going to cost you a penny. Um, whenever you do decide to repay the fee, then you pay that 0.5% uh, and it's taken out of collateral. So it's, you know, you don't have to go and find more, more my to repay. It's just taken out of the collateral, uh, mm -hmm. when you repay the debt. debt. Nice. And then it's, I, 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 I would assume some of that, um, is is then rewarded to my stakers or my holders or yeah. um so cool yeah chi chi stakers yeah so, if you hold our governance token you so get yeah. the different like revenues exactly we have two tokens my is the stable coin and then chi is the uh, governance governance token mm -hmm. which uh, you stake the chi you can vote or you have like extra voting power as well as you get some of those uh those fees paid back to you yeah Yo, did you guys see the whole Ave? Um, you know, just just absolute just craziness after Cream got hacked. There was then people were saying the ex-sushi on Ave was the same, the same potential exploit, and um, you know, people freaking out. Uh, what is what is at the top of mind for y'all when it comes to security for for kind of the borrow aspect? Because it seems like the ability to kind of wind up is like the main security problem um, with okay. lending and borrowing protocol. So kind of what's your, what's your top of mind with regards to security? How does that, um, you know, play into what you guys build? I mean, that's number one, right? Cause like our only priority or at least our most like valid priority is maintaining the peg. Um, right. Doesn't really, I mean, the governance token is important, but not really compared to the peg. Um, and we looked at that specifically, right. The cream hack and how they use the, the share token. And really, it's a matter of we, we won't add a token as collateral uh, if it's a shared token and if you can borrow that in a peer-to-peer lend, -peer lending market because then you can have that happen, The uh, what we're talking about here, right? But if we found that kind of like a vector, what happened with Cream doesn't happen with us. Um, same as like uh, MakerDAO. Yeah. Uh, one, one thing as well I would like to talk about in terms of that, that hack is that uh, when all of that scare was happening and people were pulling out of, like a lot of money from Ave, I think Justin Sun pulled out like $4 billion um, out of Ave. It skyrocketed 
the interest rates for any stables uh, right. that were in Ave. So, I mean, some people, if you had a loan out for like USDT or something along those lines, Forget you, about it. you were paying 50% um, on that on that loan. Uh, I mean, given it might have not been for, for weeks, but still um, for a good period of time, the interest rates were hella high. And see, that's what you like that's what you can get when you have like variable interest rate um kind of borrowing of yeah it's going. like why why does anybody charge people interest to borrow against themselves yeah right like why well, you're you're not literally borrowing these like my stable coins uh, against other people in shit out it's just you and your money and it's right. a vault and it's completely segregated from all other vaults um so yeah why would we charge you interest for that that's kind of crazy yeah, that concept, you know, it's a little bit different than a DEX where it's kind of peer to contract and everybody can interact. But I, I was reading through this infrastructure bill that the that good old Joe Biden passed. And uh, <laughs> yeah. you're supposed to report who you're trading with for any amount over 10,000. And it's like, how are you supposed to, you know, report the smart contract for, you know, the my ice pair that you, you know, and get and, and get their, uh, you're supposed to get their social security number or something. I think I think it just like, shows dude, that like people making the laws have no idea what they're doing. Um, yeah, it's definitely incompetence. Yeah, I I I have a lot of confidence in like big projects like MakerDAO, who are like, engaging with like regulators who are doing a lot of like legal work, and I think they will benefit like the rest of the ecosystem with the kind of research that they're doing. Because like you yeah. you wouldn't see like a small like dex on I don't know Moon River. You know, pouring a bunch of like legal fees to figure out what's what the government wants. But at the end of the day, I mean, like it's about decentralization. And that's why we care so much about decentralizing. You know, I cheat out everything you do is between you and yourself. You know, you launch a vault, that's an NFT. And like we can't touch it. It's not ours. Um, and when you mint stuff, when you repay it, it's all you. So I, I think that's very helpful because then you don't have to get the social security of like your vault because you know it's not a person. Right. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting to see that that development happen. Um, I think we're years away from it. Um, but yeah, I think decentralized stable coins is super important. Let's, let's talk about that because I feel like our audience understands stable coins, but may not be fully aware of the importance of like decentralized stable coins and what that what, what that really means. So um, yeah, maybe you could highlight kind of some of the ones out there that you guys are fond of and uh, also touch on my and kind of how that is you know, used to maintain PEG and how the other token in the system QI is also a part of that. And, you know, what that, what that looks like across the board for DeFi. Yeah. I think there's like completely different things here. Like there's like USDC, like the USDT, the centralized stable coins. And then there's the, what I like to call the money market stable coins. So the collateral backed stable coins and the stable coins in those platforms doesn't really matter. Like that's not really what's important here. Like people are not necessarily buying them to hold them. What, what matters is like the actual lending aspect within that. The idea that while you're providing liquidity on Uniswap, while you're investing by like lending out your assets on like Aave, you know, while you're doing that, you're able to still be liquid and use that liquidity for something else. Or if you're bullish on any number of tokens, you know, you don't have to sell them if you need to go pay your rent. Right. We have so many, like he was mentioning, these Bitcoin people, they're not going to sell Bitcoin. Right. And what if they need to pay rent? What if they need to, you know, I don't know, whatever expenses, dental expenses. Uh, we had a user talk about that, you know, lock up your, your BTC and borrow against it. And that idea has been done a lot. You know, you got liquidity, you have Abracadabra, you have MakerDAO, which is probably the most successful one so far. Um, you have many different ones. We do that. Right. Um, and where we're kind of focusing on is kind of this idea of letting everybody like be in control of their assets. And if you're charging interest, you know, I, I really don't like that. I, I, and, but then at the others and like you have liquidity, they don't charge interest, but they only take Ethereum, you know, <laughs> that doesn't reflect the, the current, um, ecosystem that we have in which people have a bunch of different assets, a bunch of different positions, right? Um, I mean, that's why we're partnering with many DEXs like SpookySwap, um, like QuickSwap, right? To take their LPs as collateral. So then no longer do you have to choose between, you know, you know buying something off the, like in the real world or maybe like a token versus yield farming or putting liquidity for a project that you really like. 
Yeah, exactly. Like being able to use those LPs as collateral, it means that you can still provide liquidity for like your favorite projects and everything like that, but still be liquid um, and use those, use that value. Cool. Yeah, that's an interesting concept. I mean, I think ba going back to the anti-interest rates, I, th I think having um, fixed rate loans is actually going to be an important concept. Um, so curious to think if you guys are strictly opposed to variable, variable rate loans or both fixed rate and variable rate, or if you see some sort of discrepancy there in, in value for DeFi. I think they both have a place. So we do repayment fee. And that, it's very important to differentiate repayment from borrowing. Because if you're doing on repayment, you don't lose on the upside of having had that money at the beginning to yield farm or do whatever you do with that kind of liquidity up front. Um, and if you do fixed rate, it's way better. Long term, for example, like us, without including any kind of deposit rewards, we are a better option for borrowing stable coins after a day of holding the loan. So if you're holding a loan for more than a day, it's already better. But of course, we do have borrowing rewards and we do have interest bearing tokens. So it never makes sense to borrow at a variable interest rate. But for some reason, if you wanted to do that, we have partnered with people like Market XYZ, which is kind of like a Rari fork on Polygon. Uh, and now you can mint stable coins directly on their market um, against like your collateral. And we're the counterparty. And then we charge you a very, very low interest rate. It's kind of like D3M that um, Ave is doing with Maker, in which Maker is minting into Ave. And so your yeah. counterparty there is Ave. I mean, sorry, it's, it's Maker out. Maker, yeah. um, you're able to borrow at a variable rate, but that variable rate at least is very low. So do you see a future where my finance cheat out is going to in, implement under collateralized loans? And if so, how would you, how, how would you, in a non-technical way, how, how would you manage to think about, you know, creating something like that? I think when you talk about under collateralized loans and Kila, feel free to jump in, like, it's about centralization because if you have to have uncollateralized loans, that means trust, right? That means like manual work. And I, 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 I don't know, maybe it's in the future, but I, I don't see it happening like near term, at least for our base protocol. Cool. Yeah. It's tough. You, you would need some sort of credit score or right. um, like on-chain rep, like reputation metric, but right. it would be tough to tie that to like an identity or something. Yeah, because yeah, who gets them, right? Exactly. Like the big projects, but like the big projects get hacked as well. Yeah. So like, and then we go back to what's wrong right now with the, the financial, the TradFi, right? Uh, which is like, um, you know, favoring those that have a track record against those that don't. And that's very discriminatory because just because you have a track record doesn't mean you're any more safe. Um, right. We feel that we, I mean, Cream doesn't have a good track record, but there, <laughs> there are people with like track record that still get hacked. Shots yeah. fired. <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. It, that, I mean, there's already enough debt in DeFi um, as is in an over-collateralized fashion. I think under-collateralized would, would, would cause an absolute whirl. Um, you know, I mean, but it's going to be interesting to see kind of the evolution as, as users, you know, grow and want more, um, you know, capital efficiency for their money and, and, mm -hmm. and want to be doing things. Absolutely. I, I mean, like more and more people are going to continue to, to test, you know, test that out. I mean, we haven't seen it really happen successfully so far. Um, I mean, there's some examples, I guess, but like, I mean, people can do it on top of us. I think what we're providing is a very base level, like money market that any financial system needs. Um, like I said, with the variable interest rates that you can get on market XYZ or, or directly on our vaults, somebody could essentially borrow from us very cheaply and lend it out to somebody else um, at a very high interest rate with the understanding that it doesn't have collateral. And so that counter, like that person in the middle is the one bearing the risk. It's kind of like what you see now with like banks and the central bank. Think of like make, uh, Chirao as like the central bank minting the stable coin. Of course, it's the person minting it. And then you have that counterparty in the middle that's then borrowing it to somebody, which would then be the bank. Um, and then it can decide to do it with or without collateral. Yeah, hundred percent. So in, in this instance, if we're thinking about DeFi in a money Lego sense, we're, 
you're kind of able to see these layers appear, you know, like pretty quickly, you know, you've got kind of the base layers and then you build all the way up until um, you even have like projects that are just like, that are services. Like, um, you know, if there's a liquidation protection uh, project that can go on to cheat out that, you know, ensures that, that, um, you know, if you're about to get a little, liquidated, they actually pay off some of your debt for you automatically, right? Um, I know of DeFi Savior on Ethereum will do that. Um, and then you, you you go all the way the, the other way, all the way down to like a stable coin as like the base layer for, um, you know, for DeFi. And you've got all, all these, all these blocks. And, you know, I'm curious if there's something that you guys are like, are yearning for in DeFi, something that you'd want to see, no pun intended, like that isn't in existence yet. Like if you had to build something that wasn't Cheeto, that doesn't exist in DeFi yet, like what's the, what's the billion dollar idea or like what, what do you wish, you know, was potentially in DeFi that, you know, may or may not be there now? Uh, that's, a, that's a great, great question. That's one. That... Yeah, how, how much alpha do we, do we want to give them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. No, I mean, like, I think the idea of like further integrating with different people, I mean, I, my background is in banking. So there's a lot of instruments that we don't have. Like DeFi today is so simple. Like the instruments are not at all like what you see in TradFi. And eventually we'll get to that. But I think what's more important is to get more people in DeFi. I think that's really what's important and making it easier for people to use DeFi uh, in whatever ways that might mean. There's a lot of uh, cool projects out there already. Um, so what I would love to see is more people building on top of existing protocols making it easier for newcomers to come. Um, because what's the, pro what's the point of having this awesome like world when it's just like medium to high income people using it, right? And not the people that are traditionally uh, left out of like the higher like levels of like the financial industry. Cool, yeah. Um doesn't exactly give our our listeners hella alpha as to what to build next but you know we yeah. definitely a, a, agree in terms of i mean it, yeah i mean that's kind of like the thesis right bank the unbanked um and i think that's kind of what what layer two is doing and then also what protocols are doing where um something so simple as like an nft vault for onboarding users to where somebody all they have to do is put their their bank or their credit card um, info in, they click a button and there, and there's automatically a wallet created for them. Right. And then they can automatically go ahead and right. invest That's in strategies wallet. without even having to know without even having to keep their private keys, without even having to do anything. They have their money in a strategy just after they upload via a credit card. Boom. All, all I love that on, on the back end. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a, I don't know if you know, but like in Germany or like in a lot of Europe, there's people that have their money stuck on Binance. And like they can't off ramp it because Binance was like blocked or whatever. And like all they can do is go more into the rabbit hole, but they have no idea what they're doing. Right. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've, thought, I've seen some projects that are helping out like people. Like, I mean, there's many like yield aggregators. I know Google Coin mm -hmm. is one that we're pretty close to. Yeah, um, I was thinking about them. Um, are you guys in the, in the, in the sale for that? It's coming up. Um, um, we, we are advising them. Um, okay. I, I so don't know too much about they're like a pretty that, uh, legit project, right? I Is I couldn't say it? more good things about them. I show them to everybody because yeah, I, I really think that's like here. the yeah, yeah no, that's why I keep smiling at him because I no, always know this. Yeah, yeah, okay, because no, um we you guys gonna, are great. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean we also met them. Um super cool guys. We're gonna get in, I think, and we're gonna be part and you know help them with their kind of marketing and content and stuff as well. Um awesome. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. seem super, the, like, the, that idea is just genius. Like, nobody cares about DeFi, but, like, if you can care about getting 25% on your USD just by doing basically nothing, it's like, dude, give me that, you know? Yeah, exactly. Right, and I think where we play in is helping them on the DeFi side, you know, yeah. creating, like, long-term safe strategies. Uh, strategies, you know, might not be the sexiest DGEN stuff, but it will be stuff that, like, will last it's, for the person. It's sexy. still pretty sexy. It's, <laughs> sexy. it's better than your I, Deutsche Bank bank account. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and and to, sure. to come back to one of your, your earlier questions of like things that we would want to see. I mean, um, we're, we're, kind of, we're big on like NFTs and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it would be great to see a way that we could, uh, you know, use NFTs as collateral as well. Mm -hmm. um, that way, 
you can uh, you can actually um, you know you know just actually use your NFTs for more than just right. a uh, a profile picture. Um, and the ticks there. I mean, like, the is that going to save us from uh, the NFT bear market? NFT utility oh. is that is that what's going to bring us out of this? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that would make it crazier because it's kind of like um, like just to give you a random like market, like the tulip market. Imagine if like you were to start like trading stocks on the tulips. Like, I mean, you never have the tulip. You're just trading like some like poker chip. Um, I don't know. I think it's just going to inflate the prices even more, but maybe it's what's needed. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, there's some NFT collections that have a financialization aspect already. Like those cyber Kongs produce the bananas each day. Stuff yeah. Like that's cool. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you was not right. I love Avogotchi. Avogotchi is also a pretty cool example of uh, you know, NFTs that you can throw money in and um, continue to grow over time. Uh, yeah, Avogotchi is yeah. fantastic. If you haven't tried av- Avogotchi, check it out. Um, you can even get some uh, Lao Tzu wearables. Yeah, yeah, they did some. <laughs> they did some got your wearables um, for for a platform, which is pretty nice. Yeah. But like, yeah, on like NFTs, like if it was, I don't know about CryptoPunks, but like if you're talking about like tokenized like real world assets. And then you're fractionalizing that and making liquid markets for those. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. I think that that would make a lot of sense. But if we're talking about like these assets that like are already on the fringe of like valuations, you know what I mean? Um, It might just create like a bit of like um, inflationary. Being able to to collateralize your illiquid art is not exactly um, because of what the, the, the question of its worth is already very, very subjective. Um, yeah. And then you add in the collateralization aspect where you have to maintain some sort of ratio to not get wrecked. Yeah, that would be that would be something else. Um, yeah. So is, is there um, aside from the actual art itself, how do you guys see NFTs and DeFi interacting? Like I, I think from up till now, what we've seen is like a lot of we're like on top of yield farming. If you do this, this and this, you know, you get this cool NFT as like a reward. So we've seen them as like a reward mechanism now, but I know it goes deeper than that. Like there's gotta be uses for non like non fungibility within the broader DeFi scope. That's not just a reward or, um, you know, collateralizing like, like in the real world, obviously we have, you know, for example, real estate that's non fungible, um, but then we pay for it using, you know, our fungible dollars or our, our cash or, or our credit or whatever it is. So, you know, I guess, you know, going on that example um, in DeFi more, more, more particularly, like I'm, I'm just curious what you guys think are some applications for, you know, using non fungible tokens within the DeFi ecosystem. There's so many. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, uh, ben had touched upon it before, but our vaults are actually uh, NFTs, which you can which you can trade uh, trade those NFTs, uh, which actually comes comes in handy um, more often than you would uh, you would think. Uh, I wanted to try and move some of my like funds and everything like that onto a different wallet, but I didn't want to pay back my loan um, because then I'd be inferring fees to like move my money over to a different wallet and then just take the loan back again. Um, but what I was able to do, I was able to go ahead and just, you know, transfer that NFT over to a different wallet rather than paying back all my debt and then moving and all that kind of stuff. So that, that I think is um, one of the things that's pretty cool. I think, uh, you know, another, another aspect that a lot of people are doing with, uh, with NFTs are, you know, if you own an NFT, it gives you access to real world, you know, like real world shit. Um, for example, like, uh, you have an NFT and you, you know, you get uh, access to parties or you get, you know, cool exclusive, uh, you know, access to, you know, different, uh, different unique things uh, that, I mean. Yeah, I like that a lot. Dolce Cabana is doing that on Polygon. Like so, you, if you buy like their super expensive, like uh, NFTs, you can get into special kind of like events. Um, yeah, just like a bunch of those. Also, yeah. like even in a DAO. Like, think about it. Like, yeah. if you want to sign roles, you can give them non-transferable, like, NFTs. And so, and maybe that role, somehow that NFT gives you permissions to do different things um, with, like, the funds of the protocol. Yeah. Um, maybe well, if you're doing KYC. Uh, yeah. I know I, I don't like the KYC idea at all. But, like, if eventually we need to get to that, um, you can get a KYC NFT. You've been KYC'd. Yeah. So, you now are whitelisted to interact with such and such um, protocol. Yeah. I think awesome. also when you touch, when you touch upon the DAO like DAO aspect, you know it's you know 
right now we see a lot of times in DAOs, it's just uh, the voting power is with the people who have the most, you know, most money and most tokens. You know, if you are able to give certain community members that maybe don't have all the money in the world, but they're very active in the community, these NFTs, and that can represent, you know, a higher voting power or something along those lines. Um, yeah, that could be, that could be pretty awesome. Yeah. So are you guys pretty active in um, a few DAOs or just, or mostly Cheetah, like what's your, what's been y'all's experience with, um, with DAOs? We're pretty, we're pretty active with, uh, with Cheetah. Um, it's like the first thing I see and the last thing I see every day. So um, it's hard to find time for other DAOs. I mean, there are other DAOs that I really want to get into. Of course, like MakerDAO, I, I spend a lot of time on their forums and Sushi, um, Olympus DAO. Yeah. But, we're, we're, we're in other, we're in, in other discords and all that kind of stuff, but the level that we are active in Cheetah is, you know, it's quite a bit more than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it's really, our, our discord, for example, is very active. A lot of people talking about really great shit. And so, um, you know, we have to. It's like a know, massive forum. It's like a massive. Completely different topics, like different interests, and like the debates sometimes. Exactly very educative, sometimes very uh, fiery, but uh, a lot of- If you miss a day, yeah, if you miss a day, you're like, done. Yeah. yeah, you, you got to scroll back and read read hours of, of really great content. But yeah, that's, you know, we're, we're always active there. Uh, and then we also do have community members that really help uh, help out in that regard, making sure that all the little questions that uh, that go on within the Discord, we don't have to actually handle. Yeah, I mean, we have the best community manager in the world, so- <laughs> Nacho, <laughs> Nacho, shout out. Yeah, yeah, he he came on board to the team, so been great help. But yeah, I mean, also all the like champions yeah. that really do a lot of the lead work, so that we can do some other like expansionary tasks. Yeah, recently I I was reading some tweet. I think it was a thread that was explaining why community managers are like the most important part of any project, and that they should be paid like to the utmost regard, and that they're just extremely valuable. Which I mean. It seems to be true in this in this circumstance as as well. Um, it's kind of like uh, that and the whip they say in the DAO. Some somebody just to fire it up and get people moving. Um, do you guys yeah. have one of those? Uh, we we, we got multiple. the chip wrangler. Uh, <laughs> I can think of one specific that's very active on both Discord and everywhere. I mean, we have people that have their own niche. Like for example, we have Pingo, who is one of our community members, who's really in everything that has to do with education. Right. And there's a bunch of different people that write articles about like DeFi relate and how it relates to uh, Cheetah. And they do it in like different languages. We have like, I think, nine languages. And it's all handled by Pingu, who is one of our community members. He kind of like wrangles that. I mean, we have like Rathers who does like other things. And we have like analytics people that, you know, do look at the doing analytics. Um, and it's all like community people doing stuff. Um, some on the payroll, some uh, bounties based. Yeah, but it all grew organically. It was, you know, just a bunch of bunch of people who really loved the uh, protocol coming in and helping out wherever they could. And then, um, you know, we just were overwhelmed with the amount of support and and the amount of work that they were putting in. And um, yeah, we uh, we had to had to go ahead and bring them bring them on board and kind of put them on on payroll. Because then we can just do way more. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like if if you're not like answering how to change your RPC endpoint for like the hundredth time. Uh, <laughs> you can start reading up on like what other projects are doing and how you can collaborate with them. So yeah, hundred percent. That's awesome. I'm glad to see. You. And guys, if you're, if you're listening, definitely join the cheat out discord. Um, definitely seems like there's some alpha in there um, and just good, you know, good peeps. So um, excited to hear that that's going well for you guys. Cause that's one of the biggest things for a lot of people when they come to evaluate a project, they, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask you guys what your project evaluation kind of framework looks like as well, but certainly, you know, you check the Twitter, you check the discord, you look at the tokenomics, look at the team, um, you know, the, like the discord vibe is almost one of the most important things. Um, so it's interesting to see that play out. Um, but yeah, I'm curious, what, what do you guys look at? So you find a new project that, you know, you're interested to either partner with or to invest in. You know, what would be like your framework for evaluation, you know, let's say in five minutes, like what, what would you do? Yeah. I mean, if we're, we receive a lot of offers to do like co-marketing, 
So we have to do a lot of like these calls of like, do we like point them, do we point our users to these people? And like, of course, like this, like Twitter, like not necessarily how many followers, but like, what are they tweeting? Um, like if they're just tweeting about their price, then I'm not getting like anywhere close to them. Um, like looking at Discord, are people like, you know, engaging in conversation? Um, can you get in contact with the team? That's a huge one. Like if, if you're doing like some collaboration with somebody and like, and you know, you're working th through people and like you can't talk to the team, there's like no way, you know, you're mm -hmm. doing anything with them. Like, I, I think it's very important to be available, um, no matter how many messages you get. Like, you know, we, we talk a lot with the MakerDAO people, the other people, I'm sure they're pretty busy, but they answer their messages. So like, um, I think it's important to have that. Yeah, I mean, another thing is like to see if uh, if some of the members of the team are, are doxxed. Um, it's not a necessity, but uh, it does definitely help. Um, it it helps there. I think what are there? There's a few other things that. Uh, I mean, I if they have an audit, which, they have a, yeah. I mean, audits don't really mean anything. Um, if, if other protocols, like other big yeah. protocols, are you know you using them and all that kind of stuff, are partnered with them, that's that's a pretty good. A sign looking and seeing who's you know who's on their multi sig the docs if, you know right. yeah their documents um, yeah. yeah cool yeah yeah for yeah. investing purposes a lot of people will refer more to you know coin gecko and kind of charting and stuff like this but when you get to that level um, where you're looking at the real fundamentals in terms of team community and kind of just overall vibes that's how you really uh, grow a deep conviction in something. Um, you know, you right. have to just look at charts and look at tokenomics and be like, yeah, this is going to be amazing. When you really deep dive and get, be a part of the community. And I think this is like alpha for those who are still listening is like, like less charts and more like get in deep with people and learn and connect and, and vibe. And you, you tend to just develop way deeper conviction to hold something way longer. And also absolutely. once in a while, you just get something tossed your way. That's an absolute gem just because you're in some discord and, and you found out about it. Um, right. So yeah, definitely on like, the outside. Yeah. Sorry, I was gonna say like you, you gotta assume that CoinGecko is right, right? Like there's so much bad data in crypto. Um, like people telling you one thing and then you like check on the Explorer and something else. So yeah, I think fundamental analyses are very hard to do. And if you're gonna do them, you gotta do them yourself. Yeah. Um, uh, but I guess that's just like another like level of. Yeah, I, I do want to plus one you on that, uh, you know, getting getting to know the people behind the project and everything along those lines, because you can have the best tokenomics in the world, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to rug. Um, so getting to know the people behind it and getting to know the community, if the community feels organic or if it was just bought is uh, is a good telltale sign. I mean, but even then you could be wrong. Yeah, right? even then you could be like, wrong. Just... Maybe you don't think of something in the, co I mean, I'm not a developer. So like, there's only so much due diligence I can do. Like I think yeah. about, you know, economic hacks because that's where most of them that happen, right? Usually you don't get your developer keys taken. It's usually yeah. like uh, Some something sort of like in the model. Right, exactly. Yeah, but that's kind of the risk, you know, there's always a risk in every, you know, co-partnership and every investment in every, you know, in every uh, arrangement. So you just being able to identify and then, you know, understand what the potential upside is and going with that. And uh, speaking of Cheetah and potential upside, what do we got coming up, um, you know, on the roadmap? What is the, uh, what are the alpha leaks that you can leak and what can our, our, our community get excited about as we kind of wrap this up here? Well, you got the chief alpha leaker right here. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is not coming up, Kila? Yeah, I mean, um... Uh, I don't know if we have we talked to, to the community about oh. uh, the spooky spooky LPs. Well, it's the DeFi slate people. I so, think they could keep it to themselves, right? Yeah, if yeah. We, uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna share it. Um, so we've got a partnership with uh, with Spooky in the works to where um, we'll be adding spooky LPs as collateral through through Beefy, which is uh, which is really great. And also chatting with them about um, you know margin lending through um, through Spooky's interface using Dao vaults um which we think is really great um i mean we got pretty cheap leverage um yeah. so why not use it right yeah exactly cool. we're also getting into every chain i mean not yes. every chain right like there's due diligence but like you know you got moon river you got harmony we already got a grant from them um near near we were 
we did we're already on that. avalanche I mean, we're, so we're, just we're very going. near on that one <laughs> yeah. if they wanted to have chain leak oracles that'd be great yeah yeah um, they, that's what everyone's saying has been slowing them down that's what slows everyone down um uh, it's it, the chain link oracle i mean moon river and harmony too they're waiting for their yeah. chain link oracles yeah, yeah we're we're ready we're ready for those just waiting for those chain link oracles and yeah um, yeah uh, yeah those, there's like a long list yeah, those those types of chain need a lending and borrowing um, protocol that's reliable for them to really grow. Like that's kind of like I mean, um, Harmony has mm-hmm. one now, Tranquil, um, but uh, outside of that, and I'm you know not sure use. about. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what Tranquil uses either. But now that I, I'm I've I've came to realize that they don't have chain link oracles, I'm kind of sketched. They use a twop. They use a sushi uh, sushi twop. We're chatting with them as well. Just oh boy, oh boy. I don't like twops. Oh boy, I like that they're there. That's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, it's I don't know. I'm small, scared. I mean, it's got like 80 million in liquidity or something. So it's oh, is it 80 now? Wow. Yeah, well, I mean, 60 in 60 in deposits and 20 in borrowers or something. So something like that. That's pretty nice. That's yeah, really, really yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. I mean, we want to be on Harmony, as I like to say yesterday. Um, we already bridged there. You can already yes. bridge your token there through any swap. Um, it's just waiting on that chain link oracle. But yeah. you know, once that happens, you know, cool. we're adding everything that's safe. You know, we we like to give you our whole portfolio, the avenue to be leveraged. But of course, we're not going to add a like a collateral that's not good just because he might be famous or he might have hype. Yeah. Cause yeah. at the end of the day, you yeah. want to create a long term thing that's going to survive the bear markets. Another thing yeah. that I'm pretty hyped about is that uh, Joe, uh, Joe just got a chain link Oracle and avalanche. So, right. And beefy and beefy. Yes. I am. I can't wait. I mean, snapshot is down right now, but <laughs> when they're not down, I really want to vote on those. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be throwing those, those votes out. I, I think, um, that would be that would be really huge. Still talking to, um, still talking to Chainlink about trying to see if we can get like uh, Boo and stuff along those lines. Uh, Tomb Chainlink oracles. That way we can add those. But um, oh, also um, there's some H bar. Uh, maybe some H bar. Actually, you know, yeah. we didn't even mention that. that. <laughs> yeah. So H bar is now technically available in Polygon, and it's whitelisted on QuickSwap. And it has a chain link oracle. Um, I think you can connect the dots here. Can you? I don't know. But what, what's the liquidity pair that uh, is coming out oh, yeah. tomorrow? It's going to be H bar my. <laughs> what? Yeah. Sick. And they're going to be incentivizing yeah. it. So that's going to be pretty nice. I think there's going to be a lot of liquidity. It's like Bitcoin. Like you can't really do anything on those chains. I think it's, there's a lot of value that wants to go out. And yeah. uh, well, it could they're be kind pretty of more big. like an enterprise blockchain layer one. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's really cool to see like the development of like Cheetah as a protocol layer value aggregator across, you know, six chains versus um, the, the protocols like Joe that are just on Avalanche versus the value or the settlement layers themselves, Phantom, Avalanche, um, Polygon. So all, it's going to be interesting to see like which types of, of, of protocols accrue the highest market cap, the most value. Clearly, we're seeing the FAT protocol thesis play out, which is all the layer ones are accruing the most value. But you got to think that that the next step behind them is the protocols that are on all the chains that are accruing the most value from all the users. Um, you know, but it's interesting to see that, like, I think like Joe and Pangolin of Avalanche will never leave and go to a different chain. I mean, they might, um, but for from what it seems, it seems like Spooky Swap is going to be on, um, you know, on on Phantom, Phantom Native, right? And, and so it's going to be interesting to see how protocols almost compete with each other in a sense of like wanting to get across other chains to get more users, but also wanting to keep their kind of native, lo- like loyal liquidity. Cause you know, Joe and spooky swap have some of the most loyal fan bases and users because right. mm-hmm. well, they're only on those chains. Right. Um, so it's, 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 it's going to be interesting to see how the value creation, but I think obviously we're seeing fat protocol thesis that was written years ago play out, um, which has been one of the best investments in terms of layer ones, just, absolutely erupting in market cap um so yeah, yeah. curious to see how in harmony how, yeah i'm very excited about them but yeah I, I agree with you like i i think one day it's going to be like all the assets that you have that are making money you can always like um do more with them you know yeah. it doesn't have to make it more unsafe i think it's a matter of liquidity being able to be liquid and you know my goal is to have you know you mentioned pangolin you mentioned trader joe i want all of their tvl through cheetah like, mm-hmm. why would you just drop your money in, a, in an LP and just leave it there? 
when you yeah. can keep doing things with it, right? And I think it helps also so much that we're partnering with, like, for example, Beefy, which is everywhere. Yeah. Absolutely um, everywhere. You know, they're absolutely everywhere. And so it, it makes it really easy for us to, when we go into a new chain, we, you know, we've already got a strong partner, strong um, aggregator there that we can work with. Because they uh, auto compound for us. Because the idea yeah. is like, you're not going to just lever your lifeless LPs, right? Like you want to like get your yield. Yeah. That's the whole point. Exactly. So having partners like that, that are cross chain is really, um, really fantastic. And I, I know that like uh, Beefy, they've got a ton of different uh, cool things that they're going to be doing on a cross chain for a cross chain world. So, um, yeah, uh, Sweet. I'm excited about that. Well guys, um, join the cheat out discord, get in there, get active, um, learn around, try it out. Um, I know I, I'm going to be using on phantom for sure. Um, and excited to kind of see where this goes. Thank you guys so much for coming on and dropping some alpha for the community and excited to, uh, to get this out there. I don't know yeah, what happened to Rob, by you. the way. Uh, I think he, just <laughs> he just disappeared. Out of much alpha. He went to get his ledger, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but perfect. yeah, Thanks, I really guys. appreciate it. Uh, you can find us on, on Discord or on, on Telegram. On Discord, I'm just Kila. Um, uh, yeah, J U S. I have a long name, so I'm not even going to try. It's just like <laughs> okay. Benjamin we'll, and we'll somebody will me. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, perfect. guys. Thank you, man.